Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Today we'll talk about a particular kind of refra refraction, refraction through a prismatic lens. Okay, now, um, first of all, let me just make the standard introduction. This uh, particular lecture is part of the course, which you can um, get from the unizor.com website. The course is called Physics for Teens. Um, there is a prerequisite course, which is called Math for Teens, on the same website. Um, the website is completely free. There are no ads, no strings attached. And, uh, well, each course contains a set of lectures organized in certain parts, in certain topics, in certain um, uh, individual lectures. There are um, some exams also on the website. Um, what's very important, every lecture has a textual uh, part. Basically, it's like technical notes, but it's like a textbook. So you basically have both. You have the video presentation and the piece of a textbook which is related to this particular lecture. Now, um, yeah, that's it. So let's talk about refraction. We did define two very important properties of light, reflection and refraction. Reflection we uh, studied before. Now this lecture about refraction and uh, the previous lecture basically defined what a refraction actually is and uh, in, in, in two words that's a, a change of direction, change of trajectory of the uh, ray of light when it goes through a border between different media. What's very important is that the speed of light in one media is not equal to speed of light in another media, for instance air and glass. So whenever the ray of light goes from the air to the glass and then from the glass to the air, it changes direction on each border, on each boundary between two different media. Now, this is used very extensively in lenses. So everybody knows what lenses is and I will talk today about one particular type of lens. Well, probably the simplest one. Um, it's a prismatic lens. So what is a prismatic lens? Triangular prismatic lens. So let's just use this. Okay, let's say you have a right triangle and you have another right triangle and you have this so this is a right triangular prism okay now when I will talk about changing of the direction of the light propagation I will use the ray of light which is perpendicular to one of the either the back side or the bottom side anyway the side which actually is connected to one of the catheters um, not this one but whenever the light goes let's say through the back from the back it's perpendicular to the plane and then whenever it reaches the front plane of the prism that's actually when it goes at the angle to the surface of the prism so the surface of the prism is uh, inclined and the light goes straight so there is an angle here and if there is an angle uh, which is not equal to 90 degrees not perpendicular then there will be a change of direction now we did talk about the perpendicular to a surface um, uh, ray of light. It does not change the direction, just change the speed. But when there is an angle not equal to 90 degree between the surface and the ray of light, surface means the boundary between two different media, like glass and air, okay? Then the light actually is changing a direction. Now, whenever I do all these uh, calculations in, in this lecture, I will obviously use much much easier presentation instead of three-dimensional one 
I will just cut the whole thing, uh, which is by the plane, which is parallel to the side. And if this is um, the point where the ray of light actually hits the back surface, I will use this particular section. So I will basically investigate only what's going on within this section because the light doesn't leave this section. And I will consider obviously the two-dimensional picture. So the next thing is to draw a nice picture. Now I did draw a nice picture on the website and I will use the same um, letters for the points. Okay, here it is. So let's assume this is my y-axis. And this is my x-axis. So this is all. Now, my prism would be positioned this way. And the light goes down. This is the direction of the light. Now, what happens with the light after it hits the uh, plane which is perpendicular it does not change the direction just the speed so now the light goes with the speed within well this let's say this is the glass and this is air so this is the <coughs> this is the light um, going through the air and uh, its speed is well almost the same as in the vacuum but then when it goes to uh, the glass speed reduced okay now here we have already a non-right angle between the light and the plane between the two um, uh, media between the glass and the air so it's supposed to change trajectory according to the law of refraction so you know the law of refraction that was a previous lecture Now, I is incidence, R means refraction. Now, N, I is equal to C divided by V, I. Speed of light in the vacuum, speed of light in this particular medium. So this is air. This is air. And this is glass. And obviously, N, R is equal to a similar thing. Now, the speed of light here is speed of light in the air, and that's basically the I. Now, speed here is the R, and speed in this air is again the same as uh, before, which is the I. But now, what is theta I and theta R? Well, these are angles with uh, uh, angles which trajectory of the light makes with. Um, the normal to a surface it hits. So this is a normal to this particular surface and it's called Mn. Okay, this is the point B. This is the point E. And now, what happens with the light? Well, this is angle theta i. Now, the light is supposed to make an angle uh, theta r with this normal. Now, let's just think about it. The speed of light in the air is greater than speed of light uh, in the glass, which means that corresponding refraction index in the air um, would be less so this one um, so this one incident light would be the glass should be less than this one so this would be greater 
so the trajectory of the light is here and here and this one would be theta r so this is an incident and this is the refraction now I have two different tasks here number one I have to find out by how much the trajectory of the light is changing after refraction by how much angle is uh, deviated so I will this so this would be my delta so delta is deviation from the original direction so that's number one which I have to determine number two I would like to know what's this particular distance let's call it y and let's call it x so I would like to know what's the dependency of uh, the uh, distance from the point when uh, refracted light hit the y-axis this distance from this distance so I'm thinking about if I will change the location will this, loca will, will this location change as well well the answer is yes question is by how much so these are kind of calculations which I would like to basically make and before I make all the calculations let's just think about the following now first of all we have to define our prism I defined it by angle alpha it's basically the property of the prism right so alpha is given because the prism is given which means everything else is given it's the right angle so this is 90 degree minus alpha now what's also given also given these guys uh, these are characteristics of the environment so I know what's the refraction index of air and what's the refraction index of um, glass so whenever my incident is within the glass I know what the glass is and refraction is um, uh, the uh, refraction index of the air so I know these characteristics it's physical characteristics so based on this what's my variable well, the only variable is x, basically. Okay, so it depends on how far from the, um, let's say, base of the prism. Let's call it base. How far from the base of the prism um, the ray of light hits this particular prism, and how much <coughs> location of this point depends on the location of this point. Okay, let's start with an angle. Now, first of all first statement alpha is equal to theta uh, i why this is theta i this is alpha now this is perpendicular to this and this is perpendicular to a normal right it's normal it's perpendicular so these are two angles with with mutually perpendicular angles that's why they are equal now the second observation this thing this angle is equal to QI as well. Why? Because they are vertical. This is continuation of the normal and this is continuation of the trajectory as it would go without refraction. So that's why I immediately see that my delta is equal to theta R minus theta I. delta is equal to this angle which is theta r minus this angle which is equal to qi which is equal to alpha okay. so all I have to know to find delta is to find qr and QR I can find from here knowing QI and knowing N1 and NR and QI not Q that theta I sorry theta I I know what it is 
So from this particular equation, I see that theta r, this one, is equal to, well, not theta r, sine of theta r, is equal to n i divided by n r theta i, or n i divided by n r alpha, because alpha and theta i are the same thing. <coughs> alpha is given because the prism is given, and n i and n r, in this particular case, n i would be the um, incident would be refraction index of the glass, and n r would be refraction index of the air. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the glass. This is the r. Okay. Now the glass has, by the way, has a refraction index, something like I don't know. 1.7 or something like this. So it's 1.7 times slower than in the vacuum. Air, on the other hand, is almost the same as 1. I mean, it's greater than 1, but just a little bit. So that's why this is greater than 1, and this why this, that, that's why this particular um, uh, angle is greater. Now, I made a mistake here. It's not, again, it's not theta, it's sine of theta. Sorry about that. Sine of theta. Uh, I is equal to n i divided by n r sine alpha. Okay. So that's how we get the QR. Now QR is equal to arc sine of n n i divided by n r of sine of alpha. So knowing n i and n r and knowing alpha, I know uh, theta r, and that's why I have the delta. Now, what's very important right now to notice that this delta, which is this minus alpha, so let me just change this delta deviation minus alpha. So deviation from the original direction. So if this is the original direction, this is continuation where the light is not going, light goes this way. So delta is deviation of the angle. It does not depend on the position of this particular point x. So all the parallel line, uh, all the par par parallel lines of uh, trajectories of uh, uh, light propagation, if they are parallel, they will be parallel here because the angle of deviation will be the same. So parallel lights are reflected, refra refracted to parallel rays of light. Okay, so this one will go straight and then parallel to this one. But obviously, further down, the further down I going I go, uh, along the x. Um, I, the in, uh, along this particular side of the prism, further from the fr from the base, the further um, from this point will be the intersection of my ray with y-axis. So parallel lights are refracted by the prism, this particular prism, into parallel. Now let's define actually what, what let, let, let's determine what exactly this value y is. <coughs> well, basically everything it depends on the fact that I know delta. I know this angle, right? Now, this, which is called, let's put it letter C here and D here. Now, um, What's obvious is that OC is equal to this particular, uh, what's the letter which I'm using? E. Okay, this is letter E, this point. So, we can say that OC is equal to ED. OE is equal to X
angle is equal to alpha because these are two parallels and this is the intersecting one. <coughs> so it's um, opposite uh, angles with two parallel and uh, and intersection. So I can determine length of OC, which is Y, as a difference between BD and ED. Now, CG is also equal to X, obviously, right? This is all X. OE is X, CD is X, because this is perpendicular to this, parallel to Y. So, <coughs> this segment, BE, I can find from this triangle, OBE, knowing it's a right triangle, so I know one catheter and the angle, and uh, this length, BD, I can find from BCD triangle, again, knowing angle and this side. And the difference between BD and BE will give me Y. Okay? So, let me just do it this way. So, Y is equal to, OC is equal to BD minus ED. Now, BD from this triangle, BCD, okay, what is uh, BD divided by CD is cotangents, um, uh, cotangent of, of, uh, of delta. So that's why BD is equal to CD, which is X times cotangent of delta. Now BE, now that's my BD, right. Now, um, wait a minute, BD minus, no, I'm sorry, that's again, that's wrong, BE. <coughs> So B D I have determined now B E from this triangle that's X this is uh, opposite catheter so it's tangent so it's X times tangent alpha. from which follows y is equal to x times cotangent delta minus tangent alpha. Alpha is known, this is the angle, and delta is related to alpha and, uh, and uh, indices of refraction like this. So this is the final formula. Now, as you see, it's proportional to x, which means if I will double the x, my y will be double. So that's why actually it represents the parallelism, preservation of parallelism of the rays of um, lights uh, which are coming into this type of prism perpendicular to this particular surface after they refract it by that surface. So y is proportional to x, this is coefficient of proportionality, rather complex coefficient, I mean just imagine cotangent of this minus tangent of alpha, it looks ugly, but nevertheless it's some kind of a number, number which depends only on the qualities of the uh, glass, air, and angle of the prism. Now, obviously you understand that the direction um, would change exactly the same way regardless the, of uh, the fact how this part of the prism looks. So what's important is this angle and this angle. So as long as it's perpendicular to this one then we can count on on this one. If the original light is not perpendicular then what? Well, it's very easy actually. If the angle is something like this 
what we do is first we can do proportional to we can do parallel okay let's do it this way I can always split a prism in two if I have something like this and the light goes at the angle I can always split the prism in two right so first it would be one particular this is from air to the prism which means from um, faster to uh, slower and the angle would be less then it goes within the glass this way and perpendicular to this it would be even greater increasing so the light will go <coughs> so it's basically uh, two different prisms, uh, right uh, um, triangular prisms attached to each other and that's why you can just um, uh, calculate first the deviation here using this formula and then deviation here and then the sum of these two angles would be the total deviation of the angle by this particular prism if the light is at the angle but what I did was kind of easier, I just, I just considered only one particular prism, only this one, and did it once. So for uh, different kind of uh, angles which are um, falling on the surface of the prism, not uh, perpendicular to this surface, you just have to split prism in two and calculate twice the deviation on one particular um, uh, surface and then deviation on another surface exactly using exactly the same formulas obviously but obviously you will have incident and refraction reversed the first time it will be from air to um, uh, to the glass so it will be air and glass and second it will be glass to the air so this will be glass this will be air so that's why the change of the okay that's it Basically, that's all I wanted to talk about prisms. Now, what's interesting about the prism is that it retains the parallelism. Now, what we don't actually um, need, well, in most of the cases, we need to focus the lights, uh, the ray of lights, into one particular point. So, I would like to change the geometry So instead of having this prism when this light goes to this and this goes to this, different points, I would like somehow to make it the same point. How can I make it the same point? Well, I'll probably have to have different I have to have different angle here and then it will be this way so if this would be let me just make it a little bit better so if this is one angle and it goes to this point and this is a different angle which actually makes the angle with the um, with the normal this is normal so this angle will be greater than than, than this one so deviation would be greater so this deviation would be greater than this deviation and that's why I can expect they will focus in the same point so that's why we have uh, convex lenses but that would be the subject of the next lecture okay thank you very much I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture um, the notes have much better picture than I was just trying to, to, to draw and in, in colors and all the formulas are basically there obviously so it's like a textbook very useful so read that thing and uh, next lecture would be about the curved lenses convex lenses thank you very much and good luck